Hey guys, welcome to Austin Underground. I'm here with Kazu from Blonde Red Hat. How are you feeling today? I'm good. I'm good. I'm good. Okay. Um, I'm good. I'm good. <laughs> no, right, Sleepy. <laughs> What's it like being back on tour with totally new material after nearly a decade? Um, it's it's really fun. Yeah, it's like a you know it's a process and then um, it's. It's not, nothing is perfect, but um, we're trying as we go along. Sure. Uh, it's sort of the best way to try new songs in front of audience. Yeah. Have it's, you had any like cool memory from this tour at all, or anything mem memorable? I'm I'm just enjoying because um, it looked like tour was about to fall apart until the last moment. Like we didn't oh, wow. have a TM and we didn't have tech person it all came together like at the really last second and then it turns out to be like the best crew of, I've ever had so wait that's so awesome yeah it was it was very testing and also very rewarding so yeah it's been good well I hope you feel more relaxed now that you have a team yeah I was starting to get into a group that's good moment. yeah so having this recent album and the last like nine years apart, how would you say your approach to album making is different than could like compared to, you know, like nearly a decade ago? Uh, I think uh, it's hard to say because there's been we made so many albums, you know, mm -hmm. on a very early stage. It was more like close our eyes and just did it like as fast as we can, like in three days or five mm -hmm. days. Um, we were like kind of extremely prepared for the recording. But now um, we kind of have this mindset to like go in without knowing what you're going to do, which is quite scary. You just want to go back to your bed and, and get under the cover. But uh, you that's also quite, uh, how do you say, it's a real luxury to like go in and then not knowing what how, what you're gonna play. We did it kind of like that. I never felt like, uh, okay, I'm ready to like, I know, no to know what I'm gonna play. Mm -hmm. well, it hasn't been like that, but. Um, um, Would you say you have more time to like perfect your album this time? I think it's more about like, like, staying relaxed mm -hmm. and then not um, waiting for like sort of magical moment up here mm -hmm. and then be able to capture that. It's, I think I think that's what I learned over the years. There's always an unexpected thing that it, it's it, maybe more than what you, you, what you planned. Mm -hmm. So I'm kind of really waiting for that moment to, to arrive. You think you've like learned patience maybe? Yeah, I think spontaneity and then, you know, knowing like something is in the air, something special in the air. And then when that happens, to move, move fast. <laughs> and, and <laughs> it, you know, press the rec record button or whatever. Yeah, that that's those are the things that I think I learned to, to be aware of. Yeah. That's good. Yeah. So your song, Melody Experiment, is described as a conversation between two people. <laughs> How does storytelling influence the way you write your music? And is there any like themes you want to keep exploring or any messages you want to show in your music? Um, I think I'm really, how do you say, like, I'm always like listening to what other people are saying. Mm -hmm. You know, something sticks out. Again, like it's really subliminal, right? That things that it, it kind of stays in you. Like people walk by and say something, let's just sit down and, uh, you know, uh, spend some time or whatever. You know, thing, whatever it is that it kind of sticks out in my mind, I'm always like remembering and writing it down. And yeah, turning it into a song. I mean, there's, there's never um, a lack of, uh, how do you say, res resources or source okay, that see, you yeah. feel, you, you know? Do you feel like there's, you're inspired by like everything, the smallest things? <laughs> yeah. I think I'm quite detail oriented. You know, I, 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 I think I must be OCD a little bit. <laughs> so I go in quite deep and then, and then 
I, I almost think like it's quite obvious what I'm trying to say or what I want to say, mm -hmm. and uh, I tend to to not spill it out. Um, like you don't think it's obvious to everyone else, just to yeah, you? yeah, yeah. And then by the time the record comes out, it's like Shh, fuck, I don't know if I made it clear enough the message, and uh, especially melody experiments. I'm always like, if there's so much space and it's so like smooth, I'm always playing it. It's like I'm not sure if people are getting it. You know, it's like mm -hmm. the vibe, and I hope I hope so. Yeah. What do you think are the messages of this album? If if there is any, uh, I think the the themes, the, a lot of the songs, like is talking about like ultimate things like life and death, mm -hmm. or dying and living. But I, I think the main theme is that we were able to talk about these things in a kind of light and groovy sort of enchanted yeah, very uplifting yes yeah. so it's it's kind of weird to me that i managed to talk about darkest things in a in a kind of bright context I'm absolutely yeah quite pleased with that yeah it's a very beautiful way to explore such sad themes yeah uh, thank you um in an interview with pitchfork you discussed <laughs> the many artists that like have inspired you you know what i don't read any interviews i'm not gonna read this one either <laughs> Uh, it's for my my mental health, I suppose. But I think that's a good way to live. Yeah. yeah. Well, I just wanted to ask you, like, outside of music artists, what else does inspire you? I know you said the smallest things, but has there a movie ever inspired you, or like a book, or even like an art piece? Because I know you were an art student in college. Mm -hmm. Wow. I just think like without knowing, I think musicians. We are like at the bottom of like of a filtering system, you know. Mm -hmm. So I think what whatever we release is the end of uh, the the entire like ecosystem or sewer system or mm -hmm. whatever the system that we live in, you know. So I think w without even us trying, it is like kind of like a human vomit that we the music is is sort of like um it works like that you know so mm -hmm. i'm not really analyzing it too much but i do feel like we're not at the definitely not at the the, the t tip of the pyramid but we are sort of like like everything that everybody's going through uh, is filtering through and whenever we make music that just kind of comes out i feel like that's our role yeah like if it inspires someone, it inspires them. It's just like you're just trying to say it. Well, yeah. I mean, I don't know. I've never been insanely successful artist. So, you know, if you have like a lifestyle of like uh, rich and famous, maybe you you won't feel like that. But I still think like as a musician, like artist ears and eyes and whatever, it's. is the bottom line of our society, you know? So what we go through, hopefully it it comes out, like what the society goes through comes out in music, I hope, yeah, mm -hmm. you know? Okay, I see that. Um, in a recent article, you mentioned like learning the personal relationships are different than like making music together, I guess like with your band. How would you say that this realization has influenced your dynamics, especially in the recent album? Like kind of separating friendships with music making. Yeah. Mm. I think I talk about that often because it can be so difficult to, especially with this band, we have such different personality. It's very it cla it clashing mm -hmm. constantly. Yeah, we can't agree on the smallest things. But then when something like a major emergency or di catastrophe happens, then we're all on the same page. So, yeah. But I, I do think musical chemistry and sort of personal chemistry is, is quite different. Mm -hmm. You know, you see, you hear about all of the really, really great bands and they don't really get along. Yeah, right? many of them, yeah. Yeah, but it's it's 
I think it comes from like somehow like if one person shines, the other person feels almost cancelled. You know, oh, I see. That's sort of the dynamic of their maybe human nature. You know, I think but absolutely. It, does, it doesn't have to be like that. It, it doesn't have to. It doesn't mean that if someone shines, the other person is is being denied. It, I think that's sort of the learning process that we need to always like be aware of. Of course, you're doing solo act. It's it's not there. You could do whatever you want to do. Mm -hmm. And then if you do have like really great support system, then I think that's the most liberating environment to be in. Absolutely. Uh, yeah, yeah. And with your solo album, did you feel I guess, I guess liberated by like no one conflicting you or no one having changing opinions? Well, it's still, I think it's about, it's not just about me, mm -hmm. but like the, the pleasure I found, discovered was just to see these people I collaborated with, they're putting their own quality through your music. Mm -hmm. And that's so rewarding. Like yeah. that they're playing your song, but they're really expressing their highest you know, form of their identity through music. That's to me is like, okay, cause you, you've done pretty well for yourself that you'll be able to like write a song that, that free enough, that's spacious enough that that the other artists can just fully express themselves. I think that's, no, that's, that's like a dream come true. Yeah. That's awesome that you guys can collaborate, all three of you, your own full potential in one yeah, single song. Yeah, yeah. I think it's hard to balance that, but you've I mean, done it for so many years now. Yeah, so it's like almost like a, within a band or within any project, this little parallel universe. Like, like prime example is like Unwound, I don't know. I, mm -hmm. I used to see them and they they pay no attention to one another. And wow. they, they each person it seems seemingly playing parts that has irrelevant to each other but together it was just it was like force of nature and i was like do you, How? Do you think blonde redhead is like that or is it more is it different i wouldn't yeah i don't know i think there are period that we really try to learn that mm -hmm. dynamic and try to create that but that's something like they perfected it there through their music, but I, that's I, I suppose that's the kind of music I like the most. Absolutely. Like not not helping each other so much or like you know, on your own path. Yeah, like this music that's just even if there's orchestra, and everybody's waiting for the main person to play and then uh -huh. supporting. I, I prefer when everybody's just going in their full force. And somehow they're coming together at certain like a key moment you yeah know? absolutely i mean i would say blonde redhead music is feels like music at full force yeah. but very aggressive almost yeah, very yeah. like cathartic yeah. it, there's no holding back yeah and i think that's, oh, that's awesome nice. that you're able to achieve that yeah well my last question for you is after 30 years of making music what is the most rewarding thing like what keeps you going back to it <laughs> even though you've like clearly had your own stresses and just, it just seems just awesome that you can do it so consistently. Wow. I think I, I don't even separate myself from music. Like, this is what we do, you know? I, the, I think the most scary thoughts that sometimes I have is like, what else can I do if it's not music, you know? Mm -hmm. I, I can't think of any, like, how can I if I had to survive doing something else it would be a tough question wow. for me yeah yeah your identity is music that's that's sort of that's what we do that's what I do <laughs> <laughs> well that's awesome I, I, I yeah. wish I had a passion so like well you know green. that means that it doesn't mean that you're good at it it's just oh, okay. it doesn't it doesn't mean that you know it's just that it's what I reach reach out to you know it's like yeah it's just yeah that's your way of yeah, surviving it's not, it's not an ambition definitely not an ambition well yeah. you're doing it great so <laughs> clearly it's been successful thank but, you um well thank you so much for watching again this is mia with austin underground and that's a wrap
Hang on, I wanna hear. I, I wanna try your makeup. I don't know how you do it. Though. Oh really? Yeah. yeah, I do like just a regular eyeliner, and I just add a little wing. So cute. Yeah. Do you use eyeliner a lot? Yeah, I'm out of it now. I, I know you gotta put some on. Are you gonna wear some tonight? Uh, maybe. My girlfriend was supposed to bring me eyeliner today. You should try to put on some on. But so you use pencil? I use liquid. Yeah.